You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Parasearch UK Radio. Hello. Parasearch Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Kerry Greenaway and Mark Manley on the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show, only on Parasearch Radio. Good evening and welcome to the, what am I doing, the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show. Oh my goodness me, I do apologise. I do apologise, we are running late tonight, but we are with you. Um, I'm still adding people into the show. We we had gremlins upon gremlins. Oh my goodness me, what an evening. Um, We, who have I got? I've got Mark. Mark is with me at the moment. Um, Right, Mark, take over for a minute while I finish adding people and doing what I need to do this end. (laughs) Good evening, everybody out there in uh, listening at last I get to go aliens and be bloody justified in doing it right so anyway um, we are just waiting to get everybody else put in and then we should be able to start off with this show so all I will say is is you know it's going to be the usual um, sex drugs and rock and roll lots of nudity and maybe a little bit of swearing normally Kerry's part and normally actually to be honest the sex part is normally Kerry as well oh my god well last week was fisting and the week before Zip, zip, zip. So what's it going to be? <laughs> An identified flingy object. Is that what it's going to be? Hello. Kaz is with us. Woohoo! Kaz is with us. I'm still trying to add the other person in. Okay. Carry on. Hello. Jock McFrock, you're there at last. I'm here. Good. Right, let me just... I'm trying to get into the chat room, so I can't see if any of you guys are actually messaging or anything, so uh, just listen to our, our inane dribble whilst I try and find it. Right, let's have a look. I don't uh, think anyone's saying... with us yet. God, oh my God, what a night. I tell you, it's been an absolute nightmare tonight. Uh, so, again, we do we do apologise. Just a quick note on the Great Debate Show. It will be back. It will be back next week. Um, there's just, you know, with Paul being ill, there's been a few problems, um, in regards to, um, getting the great paranormal debate back out to you, but that's fine. It's coming back next week. I spoke to Paul today and he's feeling a lot better and he promises that he will be back next week. And I've told him that if he doesn't, I'll be hunting him down with my shotgun. <laughs> so, um, um yeah. I don't think anybody's there. There is, yeah, of course there's people there out there. There is, there's nobody there. there. Is. is anybody there? It's like a Ouija board on, on air, isn't it? Anyway. Do you know what a Ouija board is? Do you know what a Ouija board is? Yes. Sexting for necrophiliacs. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, tonight's topic, changing Just the subject tonight. before Mark gets too carried <laughs> away straight away. Tonight's topic is actually a fascinating little topic. We, we thought we'd go full-blown aliens for you tonight. And we're, we're going to talk about... Oh, God, I do apologise now, everybody, um, for this, this aliens thing that is going to be stuck in your head for the rest of forever. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the Phoenix Lights. Now, this incident happened... Um, when did it happen, Mark? Because I'm really not with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep, it keeps completely cutting out on you. Um Right, the first sighting, because there was a few, the first mass sighting of the Phoenix Lights happened uh, on March 13th, 1997. Um, And basically, they were spotted throughout the valleys, um, and it was spotted, I think, if I remember rightly, three times. 
I think on 97 it was spotted three times in the same day. Um, let me just have a quick look. It certainly happened in Phoenix City. I'm trying to do everything whilst I have dogs and cats lying all over everything, which is not good. Um, let me just find this. I'm talking to myself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, naysayers and poo pooers and debunkers and this, that and the other about the Phoenix Lights. Um, and to be absolutely honest, some of it I can I can see and some of it I just think is absolutely ridiculous. You know, just ridiculous. But right. Phoenix, before Arizona. We, before we go any further, I'd just like to uh, welcome to the show CJ Simmons. Good evening, CJ. Hi, Carrie. Oh, finally Hello. got there. Everybody's in the Hi, same CJ. place at the same time mm-hmm. without no glitches. Oh, my God. All right, I'm going to go lay down now. Carry on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heartbeat. Hi, CJ. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. CJ? Is it? Yes, no, I'm still here, sorry. All right. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> one, don't, don't do that to me. Honestly, it's bad enough as it is. Come on. Okay, so we're talking about the Phoenix Lights tonight. Um, this incident, as Mark just said, happened on, the thir- uh, on March the 13th in 1997. And you were starting to talk to us about the first part, or the first, it was sort of two incidences, weren't there, Mark? Um, there was actually three, because as it went across the valley... Um, in Arizona, it was seen in three different places at uh, three different times as it was going across. Uh, people said moving slowly, it was doing this, it was doing that. But it was actually, when when you look at the the, um, the, the film and you actually measure and calculate the wind speed, etc., 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 they wreck the distance it travels in the space of about... And welcome to the Hound of the Basketball Show. Oh, God. <laughs> honestly. Oh, my God. Right. Carry on. I'm just going to mute my mic while the dog has his moment. Um, yes, that's no problem. They reckon that the uh, whatever the lights were was travelling at in excess of 400 miles an hour. But that does kind of dump on all the um, sceptics who were going, oh, it was a... Uh, um, Chinese lanterns, or oh, it was um, flares from a helicopter, oh, it was flares from a plane. I'm its military, I've seen the formation that flares come out of a helicopter and the pattern they make, and the same with um, the um, formation of a plane's one. That the fins are not flares, and they're certainly not Chinese lanterns because underneath, um, which leads me to believe that it's. I don't think they're all one massive um, UFO. I think there were a few flying in formation, but they weren't uh, travelling slowly. They were shifting. Well, Kaz, the thing uh. that gets me is <laughs> how can they fly in formation if it was Chinese lanterns? They're not going to be in formation, are they? No, they won't. They won't. They blow everywhere. Those things. Exactly. Leave so, it Sorry, CJ? Sorry, what are you saying? They were in a perfect straight line from when you see the videos up on it. They couldn't have been flares. No way no. could they have been flares. No, definitely not. Um, yeah, I have to say, I watched the footage earlier on today, and it is a little weird. And also, you've got to remember how many people saw these lights. It weren't just like one or two people. There were like yeah. loads and loads, like hundreds and hundreds of people witnessed this. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And there was reports of black triangles turning up and joining oh. the lights and this, that, and the other. Um, as you look at the, the time of the series, the actual main influx said about deformation, lights, not Chinese lanterns, not flares. It was this, that, and the other. And like the local um, police force checked with the um, local Air Force base to see if they were doing any night exercises or anything like that. And they weren't. And they denied all knowledge of it, said, I don't know what you're talking about, it's nothing to do with us, you know, and then all of a sudden, months and months and months and months and months months later, they went, oh, it it, it must have been flares from a helicopter, but you guys said you weren't operating out there, you weren't um, doing any exercise or anything. Well, we don't know, but we might have been, which, I'm sorry, that's a bit of a cop-out, really. Well, even the governor himself was saying, wasn't he, that on the night he made light of it, and then there's a big press conference, he had an alien, uh, one of his aides dressed up as an alien and then uh, what a few years later he actually sort of said it was the weirdest thing he'd ever seen and actually said he doesn't know what it was so at the time it was sort of made a bit like 
you know, light of almost, wasn't it? It was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But it's only as time's gone, people have actually gone, actually, it was really strange. I really don't know what it was, but we didn't need a mass hysteria kind of situation. <laughs> well, in the end, the government turned around and said, oh, it was flares that were dropped by an A-10 warthog. That was on training exercises uh, coming out of the Barry Goldwater range in southeast Arizona. What now, is one of them? Because I always, I've never heard of it's, a warthog. It's, Basically, it's a flying gun. Three quarters of the fuselage is a gun that fires depleted uranium rounds. Um, it's a tank buster. It's it's like the modern day version of the Hurricane, um, and it makes a, a a unique sound that is unique to itself when it fires the gun. And as you hear that noise, you know straight away what it is. I'm not even going to begin to try and impersonate the sound because it, it <laughs> basically sounds like oh go on. It sounds like it go sounds on. like a bulldog farting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love the fact um, he actually did it. <laughs> yeah, what was me in it? So, but yeah, um, there's no way that that was that. And you know, they don't fly in V formation. When they shoot the flares out, flares come out from each side and they go in a pattern like wings, um, sort of like the tips of angel wings, I should say, the feathers. They don't go in a V formation whatsoever. Um, when some of those um, lights are actually looked at, it looks like there's actually two lights. It's not just um, it's each light you can see is actually two lights, and that's what makes me think it might have been um, some things flying in formation. But for the government to turn around and say we weren't doing this and we weren't doing that and we've got no bleeding idea what you're talking about, to so suddenly turn around, and retract everything a few months later, and you go, oh yeah, it was, uh... CJ. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you tried to say something. No, 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 no. I was intensely listening. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. My, I've, honestly, my Skype is being an absolute nightmare tonight. So I do apologise. So is mine. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's a really, really strange night, and we're doing this show on the, by the skin of our teeth. Honestly, guys, you just don't realise. Um, now, see, surely the airport would know if there was any sort of aircraft in the area. Like, if if you have a drone or something like that, don't you have to register? There weren't it at drones the back then. Yeah, there weren't drones back then. I mean, this thing went. Uh, um, it was sighted in Phoenix on Sonora. Uh, no, Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, and then on um, Sonora, Mexico as well. And it went across uh, Phoenix, Tucson, and then ended up um, on the edge right by uh, Mexico there. So you know you've gone across three states um, at that height, roughly worked out at 400 miles an hour. Hundreds of people saw it. And there was reported no noise apart from a wind rushing, which a few people said, you know, and like I say, all governments going, no, we don't know what you're talking about. All military, air force, everything, no, don't know what you're on about. The governor going, aliens and having a laugh about it. And then a few months later going, well, actually, it was a bit spooky, completely going back on what he said. But having help on the same side of the knife that the governor's gone oh actually and turned around and said yeah it might have been this it might have been that but then the government have also turned around and gone oh no it was a plane no the warthog looks like and how big it is and even and you even if you had them flying formation you would hear them um well, regardless of whether they're firing or not you would hear them. hasn't this though been looked at quite extensively and it has actually where the ridge line of the mountains are flares were as they winked in and out it fitted with the 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 landscape line wasn't it that did at, it, which it kind did, of explained it it did but when the flares were coming down they weren't they they, they were coming down uniform whatever the lights were they were coming down uniform flares wouldn't come down uniform but isn't that just a perspective from where people were like looking at it i'm playing devil's advocate on this one because i have to say i'm a um, I am a great believer in the fact that a lot of things are explainable. No, that everything's pretty explainable <laughs> if you if you know the all the information. Yeah. Um. Now, lots of things are developed by the military that we don't get to know about because things, lots of things get developed and then put shelved or you know whatever. So it kind of what makes you wonder if it was just like a test of something that they were trying. All right, let me, you know? let me uh, give you a little bit more detail. Go on then, give me some if more it detail. Was just, if, if it was just a series of flares, right, coming from a an aircraft, I'm not going to say a warthog or anything like that, but from an aircraft, then A, 
you'd have the noise of the flares being ejected from the aircraft itself. As I say, if it I've was been really on high, would you hear that? If you were up in the mountains, you would still have heard it. There was no noise coming from any of these aircraft whatsoever. And I'm sorry, but it, the only ones that I know of that can do stealth is there's a particular hel- helicopter that's got stealth mode, and the stealth bombers themselves have also got stealth mode. But there's no way a warthog, the whole of the va- everybody would have heard it. But that was just um, one explanation also, that they came out with. Also, um, <laughs> um, every, hundreds of people stated that when this thing went over, it's about the size of two football fields, and you could see the moon disappearing behind it as it went over. And I don't know of any aircraft that big, um, apart from a few carriers that might be able to do that. Well, this is one of the reasons we got CJ on tonight because CJ actually um, had a personal experience. Um, literally, what, two weeks ago, CJ? It was last Saturday uh, when we came back uh, from doing an event. Uh, it was about 4.25 in the morning. And what the gentleman has just described, I, I'm quite gobsmacked, really, because that's exactly what i seen coming over from Bodmin Moor, straight over the top ah. the... Um, uh, Jamaica Inn, heading towards the other side of the moor. Uh, it was a big black triangle. Um, yeah. I've, I've got to be quite honest with you. I, there was no sound coming from it whatsoever. Uh, when I eventually ran in, because I panicked a little bit, because you don't expect to see anything like this. Yeah. To be quite, it was like something out of uh, Independence Day. It was that. <laughs> it was that big coming towards us, and I could see the outline. But when I ran in uh, to go and get my camera, because I thought, well, I'll grab a camera or my mobile, try to wake up Corinne, but she didn't answer the phone. Uh, and <laughs> so she must have been sleeping. So I made a hell of a noise running in, run back out, and obviously the footage that I put up on my timeline is what I eventually caught. Uh, I think you've seen it, didn't you, Carrie? I did see it, yeah. It is hard to make out, I'm not going to lie. It's very hard. And it's black, absolutely black, because obviously it was heading in the other direction of the moor where it was all the darker end. But if I had caught it when it was coming inwards, you would have seen the outline of the shadow. But what was different about it, just before then, there was a jet and it looked as if it was escorting it. That's all I can say. But I'm not saying it was a UFO, because at the end of the day... I mean, I'd like to think and believe firmly that there's probably aircraft out there that we know no knowledge of. Yeah. I mean, just think of Area 51, what's coming out of Area 51 constantly, and they're not going to tell us. But I've got to be quite honest. I've never seen anything like it before. I've never, not in my life. And it did shock me. And if Corinne was on here, she would probably tell you how excited I was when I got back to the inn, to be quite honest. And I'm serious. She said you were white as a sheet and shaking, and it actually takes quite a lot to make you... Well, to be quite honest, for me to be... I'll be honest, I'll say this. It did scare the shit out of me. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. I mean, I've done ghost hunting, I've done all sorts of things and scary things. This actually did scare me because you couldn't hear it as it was coming over. And the only way that I could see that it was a black triangle... And it, there was not anything missing in the middle. It was completely a black triangle, and it was huge. Was because the way it came over the moor, it came over the motorway, and you had motorway lights. Mm-hmm. So that 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 illuminated a little tiny bit of it, but it, it was absolutely huge. And some people have said to me, it could have been a stealth bomber. It could have been this. Uh, I've never heard a stealth bomber. You know, uh, take an awful land and never seen one close up, so I couldn't really say. But this thing wasn't going fast, it was going slow. I would have said that it could have easily have dropped out of the sky, to be quite honest. That's how slow it went, and then it just went straight off over to the moor, following the actual jet fighter that was in front of it. So I don't know if it was being escorted or whether this bloody thing was chasing it, to be quite honest. But I guess the next day, when I explained to them and showed them, he did say to me that down in Cornwall, now I I, I don't know the bases, but he said that is uh, UK's second largest military base. That might be right, it might be wrong, I'm not sure, but it's down that area somewhere. So it could have been some sort of experimental craft for all we know. Well, 
Uh, when I, I was talking to you about this um, during the week, because Karen told me about this, yeah, and um, this experience you'd had. So I was like, oh, I love a theory. Um, I lo- you know, I love that sort of thing. So I actually went away and did a li- little bit of, you know, digging, mm. as you do. And there is, and I'm going to use the word conspiracy, um, of something <laughs> called a TR3B, which is allegedly an alleged black project spycraft uh, that can triangular shaped. It has all the hallmarks that you said, you know, on it. Fits in with the description, going back to the Phoenix lights. Um, but apparently this plane can go into space as well. How they know this, these conspiracy theorists, I love it. But it is very strange. Now, this triangular shaped craft has been seen. I mean, me and CJ yes. were looking around the internet, weren't we? It's been seen everywhere. Yeah, there's recently there's been one spotted in Russia, I, I believe, uh, in the daytime, and somebody took a photograph of it. I think I shared it on your timeline. Mm. Um, and, and you know that they, they're being seen on a regular basis. To be quite honest, Which so way? to me, I like to think, well, is it extra? You know, is it is it is it aliens? Is it spacecrafts? Or is it something that is going on, which is, uh, as you said, in a black project as such? I'm more tending to think this is black project. Project. Yeah. This is and made to be quite honest. Yeah. But if it is the technology that must have gone into it, where the hell did they get the technology to do this sort of stuff? Kaz, the thing that gets me. You've got all these different theories, and to be honest, when I'm looking at it, I would have to say I think it's got to be some sort of government project. Yeah, I agree. I really do. The TR3B, uh, I don't know if you remember something back at the end of last year, but uh, basically somebody flicking through Google Earth looked on somewhere in a remote part of Australia and found this place where there's lots of black, well, there's big black triangles on it. And that place is near a place called uh, Pine Gap. And uh, I think you guys know what Pine Gap is. It's the Australian uh, version of Area 51. Um, So quite frankly, the TR-3B was probably developed there. They've made a few of them, and they're flying around the world testing them. Well, they are being seen all around the world. This isn't just localised. I mean, Phoenix Lights probably is one of the earliest reports, probably, Mm. of this. But, as I say, when me and CJ were in the middle of the week, you know, we were playing around, we were, like, looking at what it possibly could have been. Do you know what I mean? Um, Going on the... Trying to work out logically. We found reports from all over the world. Yeah. There's also another pine... uh, Another pine gap. There was another sighting uh, of the Phoenix lights in Phoenix again, and that was in December of last year, which was not long after the um, alleged um, proving grounds of the the TR3B was found in Australia. It was about a month afterwards. Is this, though, a lot of people um, joining the dots in a way that... Right, the way technology moves, it moves so fast in this day and age. And the man on the ground, like the everyday person, you've only got to look at the the way mobile phones have developed over the last, what, 20 years. You know, and how quickly new models come out with new functions. So, so quick. So it's almost like technology's running. Now, if that's what we've got on a day-to-day front, you know, things that we have around our homes that are now accessible to the everyday person, that's... That's got to be a fraction of what is being used or what is available in regards to things we don't know about. There's things that the government have got, like rail guns. People think that rail guns were something that was in, a, in, in the movies and it's fantasy. No, rail guns were around in the Second World War, but they weren't a handheld version. They were so big they had to be put on ships or fitted on uh, trains or in hills. But uh, they, well, they've had a. Um, it fires out uh, basically aluminium shells. Um, no gunpowder and oh, electricity. Right. Um, and it fires them almost at the speed of sound. Um, and they've actually, I think it was the late 90s, they developed a handheld version. But they will still, this day, go, no, nah, no, nah, don't know what you're talking about. No, we haven't got that. Everybody knows, you know. But um, it doesn't matter what's out there. There are things, as you said, there's things out there we are not going to find out about for quite a while. But the government knows we've all seen it. But they also know that a lot of us are gullible enough to believe what they say it is, you know. Exactly. But why have they hated it? Be- exactly. Why? What's the point? But 
it's again, it's like the alien thing. I, I for one, do not. Th- I don't think every single thing out there is aliens in this, that, and the other. I'd be stupid if I did that. But I don't believe, and I'm certainly not arrogant enough to believe, that our planet is the only planet in the whole of the cosmos that has intelligent life on it. I think that's rubbish. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. Mm. I, I would want to go back to what I've seen, though, because to be quite honest with you, I have got a little bit of a theory. It's a whacked out theory, but. Go on, we oh, love a whacked out theory on a Friday. Go on. <laughs> 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 Over the last fortnight, we've obviously had all this going back and forth with Russia and the UK. And right. basically, with all this crap going on and they're all arguing, I mean, I wouldn't put it past that maybe what I did see was something that obviously is not readily out there and it was being transported, hence the, the escort, to a military base because of what has taken place in the last fortnight, really, with the hostilities with Russia and the UK. And because when I've done a little bit of looking into it, we found out that this black triangle has been seen down in Cornwall, Bodmin and all around there quite a, a number of times over the last number of years. So it's not something that's new to that area. It's um, something that is readily probably being flown around there. I have to agree with you on that because I used to live in Somerset and I can't remember if I've told Kerry or not, but years ago I was coming back uh, across um, the hills in Dorset going to my mum's place when I was a lot younger and I pulled over the cars with one of my exes at the time and we both saw a dirty great big black triangle and I mean huge black triangle, uh, full moon, you could see the triangle. You couldn't see any lights or anything like that, but you could see it, and it was getting closer and closer and closer and bigger and bigger and bigger, and there was no noise. And it went straight over the top of our heads, and it was literally like... I, it, well, like this, the description of the Arizona one, it was like having two football fields fly straight over our heads. And me and her looked at each other and went... Fah! Got in the car and drove like um, <laughs> drove like the devil down to me mum's, and we were like... <laughs> you know? But that's what's but, scary about it, yeah. though, isn't it? It's, there's, there's, there was no, that's what scared, not scared me, that's what unnerved no, me. It was scary. And because, you know, there was people going around, there was traffic still going down the motorway. Other people must have seen what I seen. All right, it was yes. early hours of the morning, but the farmers are out there, there's deliveries going on. Other people must have seen what, what was spotted up there. But this was big. I wouldn't say it was as, it was huge, huge, but it was a fair size, bigger than what I've seen. I'd say bigger than a jumbo jet. Mm. And that's from tip yeah. to tip. It was that yeah. the width of it at some point. So it was a lot larger than that. But the silence from it. And then it's mm. just going straight over your head and then suddenly stopping and then turning in a direction and then going in a different direction, not like a conventional aircraft would do. So I'd, I'd like to think that I may have had an opportunity to have seen something which maybe not many people do get to see, and I feel lucky in that way. But it was scary. I've got to be quite honest. It was very... Okay. There's a point there. There's a really integral point there. Both you two guys were unnerved by it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you two guys, you you love your conspiracy theories and your aliens and your paranormal and your scary stuff scary. And, you know you you like all that kind of stuff so you it takes a little to unnerve you correct it does take a, a, a lot to unnerve me although if you speak to chris yeah, Howard, yeah, yeah. Chester, yeah. he'll tell you he's always scared in the life out of me and i'm always jumping <laughs> but the point is the general populace if it unnerved two people that you know mm. do this sort of stuff as a hobby <laughs> if if that unnerved you two guys could you imagine what it would do to the general populace well no exactly but i mean andy Which mercer's um, decided to jump decided to jump on a little bit in the uh, uh, room there and saying it's two conflicting arguments it's not at all i although i said i don't believe we are the only people out there that, with intelligent life on there I've not said I don't think they haven't visited us. I think they've visited us plenty of times. And I think the government knows all about it. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just not stupid. I do think there is intelligent life out there. And they've visited us. And those on on high That's with the need to know opinion, knowledge. That's your personal opinion, No, they have. That's what I think, yeah. That's your personal opinion. Yeah. Okay. But it's not but just my what, opinion. The, the point is, is if that's unnerving 
for people that know a little bit about that kind of subject. Imagine how a mass sighting would have unnerved people. So they're going to make light of it, going back to Phoenix Lights. You know, um, could you imagine? Well, yeah, actually, we've got this aircraft that we're testing, and, you know, it could... You know, we're going to be completely honest with you guys. It's pretty scary ourselves. You can go to outer space. It can do this. It can do that. Could you imagine how unnerved people would be? Back in that day as well, you've got to think of the time. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the old saying? You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all of the time. So you can put out a, a, a what's that disclaimer and, and false flag story to make people think it's something else. But, they, but, but I, don't I do think, think it they was do that as a reason. I do think sometimes the government has to do that for a reason. You've only got to go back to when War of the Worlds was put out on radio as a series and saw the <laughs> impact that that actually had on people. People were like yeah. thinking it was real, packing their bags and leaving. And they actually had to say, no, this isn't real, this is fiction, everybody. You know, <laughs> calm down. You know, go home. People committed suicide over it. Yeah, there was, there was a huge issue. So can you imagine... And I'm, I, I do, I'm not an alien person at all. Well, I'm, I don't buy into that um, at all, to be fair. But that's my personal opinion on this. I always think that there's a more logical explanation for some of the experiences people have. Personal opinion, uh, opinion it, that's mine, right? But I don't discount anybody that's had an experience. But my point is, can you imagine the impact it would have on society if... For example, playing devil's advocate, it was something that was back engineered from an alien aircraft. Or even the fact that it is a brand spanking new military plane, it freaks people out. I remember the Aurora when that was first released. People were in awe of it because it was so advanced at that time. The same as the stealth bomber. You remember mm. those days where people are like, That's God, right, yeah. Jesus Christ. You know, it can do that. It's it's hard. Kaz? Well, to be quite honest with you, when you look at the stealth bomber back in then, <laughs> you would have looked and what you would have seen from underneath would have probably been a black triangle. Exactly. Yeah, Kaz? Thing is, is <laughs> you've got to admit, there is so many things that we are never going to know about. Yeah. There's so many things that have been hidden from us. For exactly. whatever whatever reasons they've got, they they hide a lot of stuff from us. But I do actually think there's got to be a logical explanation to it all. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Well, to be quite honest with you, I think I think it's stated, and you, you probably have heard of this. Most governments have got policies on what to do and how to deal with things like this, and they put plans in place. So. Really, at the end of the day, the way I look at it is um, just take the UK government. They probably got a policy or some plans in place that have been thought up by some think tank somewhere Mm -hmm. that what we would do. One of them would be keep it out of the public domain because it would cause mass panic. Yeah. I mean, you made a a classic um, comparison there with the War of the Worlds. Yeah. Uh, what look just look what a radio show done back then all right it was back then in it years yeah, ago fair enough but still the same uh, principle comes today if suddenly they came out in public and said hey guys guess what we're not the only inhabited planet in this universe there is life out there we have made contact there would be mass panic there would For be mass sad- panic oh yeah it- the I'd be first, one of them. <laughs> the first thing that would go would be religion because then people yep. would start flocking yep. and it would just cause, well, it would just cause absolute blue murder. So they're not going to make it and there's never going to be, and I, 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 I believe this, there's never going to be disclosure, not unless um, it's some really hard, credible evidence is caught or is brought out uh, and they're caught out with their pants down around their ankles. Kind of because... like Independence Day. Yeah, yeah it'd have yeah. to be that. <laughs> Millions of people see it. <laughs> Until they're knocking on your door or you're actually thinking, oh, hell, we've got to get out of you. That's the only time they're going to come out. But you know they're... what I would do if that happened? What would you do? First thing I would do is ring Kerry and go, bloody told you! <laughs> <laughs> 
I wouldn't be here. I'd have packed my bags and I'd be heading for the mountains. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's just... So, I think we'd be again, with um, cars going to Greece. Yeah. Again, to, yeah, um, to play devil's advocate on that, with the government um, uh, structures in place, if something happens, believe it or not, when we did How to Survive a Zombie Apocalypse, I actually found that the government actually have in place something. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't a zombie apocalypse. I mean that. It's not like a Walking Dead scenario. Yeah, it was a global, but a global disaster, wasn't it? If it was a global um, epidemic kind of situation, there are things in place for that too. How they would how the US know, what, government what they would do if there was something that affected the global populace. You know, um, there are structures in place for that. They have been, sci- you know, not scientific, universal uh, university even type studies done on this on the impact it would have on our sociological and psychological effects it would have on the populace and what structures would need to be put in place to help control that. So it wouldn't surprise me if they had those kind of things in place. However, I would also say that's just good planning. (laughs) Well, the the US um, uh, government has actually got an action plan in the uh, event of an invasion. Um, I remember seeing it. Oh, oh, the good old Kev Kerr. Sorry, Kev Kerr is in the pub, and he has asked someone to describe the events of the East London UFO conspiracy of 1973. I was one year old. Oh. Okay. I don't think that's to us. I think he's actually said that to the pub. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we can't answer that question for him. I'm afraid. But, um, I don't... I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen any of the um, what, what's that program? Uh, Conspiracy theories with Jesse Ventura. And I was just going to say that as well. There's some yeah. good things on there. Yeah, he's not afraid to go and tackle no. the the top guys about that. And he, on one of those episodes, he tackled them. You know what I'm going to say? Don't you? He yeah. tackled them about the um, action plan for alien invasion, and yes. they admitted that it's real. They did say. Yeah, it, you got somebody in the entertainment and say, yeah, it is real, but it's not widely known. No, no. But, and not only talking but about that. whether or not it's a worldwide epidemic, whether or not it's alien invasion, whether or not it's, um, I don't know, a worldwide coup or whatever it be, the government would have those controls in place. They would, they would already have those in exactly the same way as um, when a member of the royal family died, they already have the funeral plans in place. Yeah, they already yeah, know yeah. exactly yeah. what's going to happen. They have to. Exactly, have you to have to. That. It's just good planning, surely. And it's about managing that grief process of the populace, you know, in regards to that. So they would have to have those kind of structures in place if something of that kind of magnitude would happen. Well, as you've all said, you've got to have that because it is. It's going to be mass panic all the way around the world. You know, those echoes will be heard for years and years and years to come. And the only way you're going to get any sort of big disclosure is, as you say, um, a huge, big-ass alien spaceship comes and flies and stops right over the centre of London, Washington, whatever, so that everybody can go, ooh, and then you can start selling T-shirts with aliens written on it, you know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, they did try that in the in the United States, didn't they? They they tried for disclosure. There was a big, massive. I don't know exactly all the names of the people that were involved in it. Uh, I know the guy Nick Pope from over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh gosh, yes, uh, yeah. we know Nick. Uh, yeah, uh, he um, he was involved in it as well. And they did try to do, and they were saying disclosures coming, disclosures coming, disclosure is never gonna come. I'm with you on that. You won't get full disclosure. No. You will never get full disclosure because at the end of the day, you're going to think, the general public is going to think, what? All this has been going on. We don't know. You know, we've known nothing. But people live every day oblivious to what's going on around the world, what's taking place around the world, to be and quite I actually, I'm going to interject there. I would say they happily live yeah. in ignorance. Yeah. 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 They really do happily. I mean, I lived happily in ignorance until Saturday. <laughs> night, which you actually think, what the hell am I looking at? You know, it, it it is a little bit of a shock to the system. Now, if it shocked me, I can imagine if 
in broad daylight over London, a black triangle comes flying over there. Imagine what's going to take place. There'd be mass panic. Oh, God, yeah. of that size, you know. OK, mm. so we've seen aeroplanes in the sky, you know, we're used to that kind of thing. Can you imagine that going over London? Broad, like you say, broad daylight. And it's not because it's anything alien, and that's in inverted commas, um, everybody, but it just is because it's so far out of your comfort zone and your knowledge base... It's going to cause panic. Well, yeah, yeah I, I've got to be quite honest. There was a massive case. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's the one that happened down in Wales, in Cardiff, with a police helicopter that was coming uh, from Newport direction towards Cardiff, and they chased what they believed yes. was a yes. UFO all over yes. the capital of Cardiff, right down, I think, as far as Swansea, until it shot out over into the channel. That was uh, on the news, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on the news. Yeah. They've had various programs on it, and they were saying about lanterns, and they debunked all that. Uh, but you know, you had police trained police officers and a police helicopter, uh, and they're chasing, and they're saying we are chasing this object. <laughs> and yet, still, it didn't really catch on. People didn't play, think, well, these are trained police officers. They would, yes. they would know they're piloting a, a police helicopter. They're trained in what they're doing, and they're actually saying, hey, guys, we're chasing an object. We don't know what it is, and it's changing direction yes. in different um, directions all the time. But, but there's it's actually- not necessarily that, that communication between military and police. Mm-hmm. The, police, yeah. the military aren't going to phone up the police and say, oh, by the way, we're going to be out testing a new aircraft tonight. Oh, Just please. ignore it. You know, they're not going to do that. Um, Ashley has brought up a really good point in the chat room. He said, as far back as World War I, governments have learned to control the flow of information in order to ensure Joe public don't panic or cause issues. This was proven in regards to the case of Helen Duncan, as she allegedly communicated with a sailor from a ship that had sunk, but that information hadn't actually been released. So she was trialled um, and found guilty under the Witchcraft Act. Witchcraft, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now the Official 60s. Secrets Act is something I've had to sign the Official Secrets Act before now under Sorry, a job yeah, that I was yeah. doing. And the, trust me, the job I was doing, I wouldn't have actually classed it as an official secret. But I've actually had to sign that form before now. Yeah. I've got yeah, be, and it's not it's, a little form. It's a big, thick one. Uh, it's it's, it's a big, huge. I, I signed it once, and only once, because I used to do catering. And uh, I worked for a company that used to do the military contracts. So when yeah. they used to have their military fairs, we had to go in there, and we had to be vetted, you had to fill in the forms uh, and, and everything. And to be quite honest with you, I used to love, I only went there the once, and it was a military fair with all the weapons there. And I was gobsmacked, even as a waiter then, silver service waiter, going around giving food, of what sort of military equipment was there on view, which they were selling. You know, but yeah. it just, it really, really shocks you. But we had to sign that, and we were just waiters at that time, just going and serving food. And the trust sp- me, you ain't going to get to see anything that's an official secret. No, no, no. no but some not. of the stuff that was in there was like, oh, and this was going back years and years and years and years. The stuff that was in there was absolutely amazing. Even some of the suits that you could see that they were selling off. And I thought, I've never in my whole life seen anything like that in the military before. But it was there, and yeah. it, that, I think there's a hell of a lot out there to be quite. Yeah, honest. I mean, the one I signed um, for, you know, because as you said yourself, you signed one, and then when I did my sergeant's course, I'd sign a yeah. different one. I'm not even allowed to talk about the training that no. I used to give people. You know, it's it's. I mean, most of it is is like why not? Because it is there's there's nothing hush hush about it. But you're not allowed to, you know. No, I mean, I say what I was um, involved in wasn't. I wouldn't have classed as the official secret, you know, and it wouldn't have hurt anybody. Um, no, but... it wasn't. You were working for Victoria's Secret. We know what you're like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We've actually got quite a long way into the show before anything like that has come up. So thanks for that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> they were weapons of mass destruction <laughs> from a female perspective. <laughs> Uh, right, that's enough about your hooters. Right, come on. <laughs> um, but 
you know, I still hate to sign that. I mean, even to this day, I get death threats about that. No, no I don't. I'm only joking. <laughs> can, can I hastily bring us back onto course a second? Because I'd like... Ooh, um, I would like to um, just let the, our listeners know who one of the actual witnesses to the Phoenix Lights was. Go on, then. And he's frozen. Right. Um, I know... Uh, you guys are freezing up on me as well. Don't, I think it's just rubbish internet. Um, yeah. Right. Ba- basically, what, um, there was a pilot who'd reportedly seen the lights while flying towards Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. Um, the pilot was with his son and he radioed the tower. Uh, there are at least two distinct sightings, one of which would later be explained as a group of Air National Guard planes dropping flares. But the mystery of the it's persisted along this reported the this is before anybody said all oh, flares or oh, warthogs over this or that um now it turns out that there may be an answer to that and that that pilot was actually the actor kurt russell um he was uh tested for bbc's the one show in april last year and he turned around and admitted he was actually the pilot he said he was uh fly uh, Oh, he was flying his son to his girlfriend, and as they were on approach, he saw six lights over the airport, absolutely uniform, in a V-shape. Um, he said his son asked him what they were, and they weren't sure, so they radioed the tower to ask if there were any planes in the area, and they said no. The tower had completely denied it, and nothing in the area. Um, so uh, Kurt Russell's turn around and said, OK, I'm going to declare it's, it's unidentified, it's flying, and it's six objects, and that's the uh, and it's been registered, and they they made you know made a note of it. Uh, Russell said he flew back to his, his to LA and forgot about it until two years later, when his wife Horn was watching a show about UFOs, and she she said you know when they the announcer was talking Phoenix, you know the lights were spotted by a pilot and his son, and she's like, wasn't that you? And there you go. <laughs> so Kurt Russell was the first guy to see the lights and radio it in. Yeah, see, I, f- I find that fascinating. He said that on the that one show. That is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. When I watched when I that, I actually watched that clip earlier, and he said the weird thing about it is he hadn't even realised that that's what he had been like privy. That's what had happened. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't until his missus turned around and said, "Hang on, wasn't that what you were talking about?" Yeah. And then he went, "Oh yeah." He hadn't even sort of like put two and two together as to to what that was. He he. It was one of those because it was one of those situations where it was like. That's strange. Why, why did I forget that? But again, that's. He was on a trip. He did his thing. He went back home. He got on with his life. And it didn't really register it. For him, it wasn't, oh my God, that's a really weird thing. <laughs> that was just, um, you but, know, what happened. We've lost CJ for the moment. There were gremlins in the system all over the place tonight, guys. So we do apologise. Um, we are. Well, yes, okay, sorry. You do have to take note, though, though, that it's worth noting down that Russell made the disclosure during an appearance to pr- promote the new Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> movie. That is very true. That is very, so, very true. Yeah, so he did say that. Yeah, yeah, he did say that. He did say that. He did say that. He did say that. It was just a good old... Well, it certainly pushed it out there further, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> you know, that is very, very true. <laughs> It was a Maybe. Guardians of the Galaxy plug on the one show. Yeah. That's why they were on the one show. And he yeah. just happened to be a character, an alien, <laughs> that had come to Earth and, yeah. <laughs> you know, birthed... What was the character? Was it Thor? No, it wasn't Thor, was it? No, no, no. He, he sighed the, the, the Cappy, yeah. Well, I would say the raccoon, but it wasn't. Um, no, I can't remember the character's name, but he, he, he was the father of the, the main guy. Yeah, I've seen that film and I can't remember the main guy's name either. That... Anyway, so yes, yeah, so if you want publicity for a show, oh, come on, <laughs> The Phoenix Lights is one of the major um, unexplained phenomena, I think we'll go with, rather than, I hate yeah. using the ufology UFO word, I really don't like it, but, um, uh, you know, the one of the best known unexplained phenomena that are out there. But people have said that they have explained it. They have used, you know, that there's been many theories as to what it could be, what it could have been. I am sticking with my 
I believe it was something to do with the military, something to do with the government, I think it was. that they will not yeah. disclose um, for their own reasons, for whatever reason that is, they will not disclose it. I, yeah, that's, that's the part one, of the fence I'm on on this one. I, I was going to say, one thing I would like to point out, although I'm the, the aliens guy, you've got to remember that UFO and USO, all it means is it's just not being recognised what it is in the sky. It doesn't mean it comes from... Uh, other planet or anything like that. The other is an alien UFO or an alien USO or anything like that. I think a lot of things is misinterpret are misinterpreted. A lot of it you've got distortion from the curvature of the Earth, the light hitting it, and this, that, and the other. And a lot of it is like when we go on paranormal investigations, ninety nine point nine percent of them you can explain away. However, you're going to be left with the odd point one percent. You can't explain away. And that's what my, although I'm like, well, on the alien side of it, you can explain it. But it's just the odd bit that makes you go, hmm, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Things that make you yeah. go, hmm, isn't hmm. it? But, is, but, yeah. but again, playing a devil's advocate, this is all part of the reason we get into this field. This is all part of the reason um, we are actually out there doing what we do because we have. Ah, CJ's back with us. He dropped, but he's now back with us <laughs> in the room. There are, like I said, there are gremlins in the system all over the place tonight, so we do apologise, guys. It's that bloody alien. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's a government conspiracy to not allow us to do this particular show tonight. Sure. How do you <laughs> thought about that? <laughs> Call Tana if it works for the CIA. <laughs> um. You know, but this is this these things is what gets people interested in various areas. You have, you know, you you have a personal. Generally, it starts with a personal experience that you you know you want to explain. For us, in regards to the paranormal, it was generally um, a personal experience in regards to a spirit or an entity or a, you know something along those lines. But other people have those kind of experiences in regards to what you experienced at Jamaica Inn, and it's led them down that kind of pathway as to trying to explain what what that was that they witnessed and that they saw. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, also, we all love it, and we all love a mystery, and we all love trying to find out, because we're real people, and, you know, as humans, we like to find explanations for things like things left un- unsaid or unexplained. So we try and try and try and try to find a rational explanation for it. And I love it when you get that 0.1% where you cannot, no matter what you do, explain away what that was. And that's yeah. the same with every single aspect of paranormal. And that's why we all do it. Because we get that 1% where we go, woo, you know? <laughs> so in 10 years' time, we're going to look back at this show and go, see, we knew it was a government conspiracy all <laughs> along. I, I, I think a lot of these black triangles are. I do think a lot of these triangles are. They're definitely go. So is it... Right, OK, let, let's throw this little last question into the mix. Is it a conspiracy or is it just maintaining that form of... Um, what was the words that we used? Control of flow of information. Yeah, it, it's... I, think, I don't think there's a conspiracy at all. I think it's just... The people aren't ready. To, the government thinks the people are not ready to accept what we have already. Yeah. Or is it the people, or is it nothing to do with the people in general? Maybe it's to do with, um, we don't want to let other nations know what's being yeah. developed. Yeah, definitely. I think that, that is the case, really, at the, at the end of the day. When you look at the International Space Station and see what, uh, when you watch the live feeds up there, and then all of a sudden they don't help NASA when they cut the live feed, yeah. they turn around and say, oh, I can see a big, bright, flashing light outside the space station, and then suddenly the live feed is caught. Well, it's going to cause controversy, and people are going to look yeah. at it and say, ah, they're hiding something, you know? But, I mean, yeah. you, you have a lot of astronauts coming out now and saying that we're not alone. And yeah. These, uh, yeah, exactly. These are well-respected individuals. Yeah. What, why would they risk their reputations to come out and say, hey, guys, I'm, I'm going on the record as saying we're not alone in this universe. And I think we would be ignorant to think that we were the only inhabited planet, not saying that it is intelligent life, but it may be some form of life out there. 
First of all, I'd like to say spot on that man. Secondly, for God's sake, add me on Facebook. And also, thirdly, <laughs> what you were saying is exactly right, because Buzz Aldrin has come out, and there was um, some of the live feed back when they were walking on the moon. That was actually cut, and that yeah. was when they were told to go to another... You know what I'm going to say. Yeah, when they were no- told to go to another channel, and they went to the other channel, and you, Buzz, I think it was Buzz Aldrin turned around to, back to the moon base and said, um, they're there, they're watching and- us. They're watching what? us from the ridge. Yes, yeah, they're, they're that's, watching that's, us from the ridge. That actually happened. That was for real. And all the other astronauts backed him up on that. So, yeah, that did happen. There was, a, I think it was about three or four ships, wasn't there? Yeah, up on, up on the top of the ridge. Or hovering. Yeah. Well, well, well. That is a whole new... We have tried to invite Nick Pope onto the show, Alan Cooper, but unfortunately Nick is not prepared to speak publicly um, to any of our Parasearch presenters. Yeah. And we have <laughs> tried. And we Why are tried. tried. <laughs> uh, we are still trying, I believe. Uh, Kaz, isn't that right? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying. I promise him I won't scream alien at him. No, no. Wow. I, um, I, that I, is I, something I, we are I, trying. I, Carrie, oh. I will mention one guy that is really, really good in this subject, and that's Richard D. Hall. Have you heard of Richard D. Hall? Uh, Rich Quack. If you, if you ever get an opportunity, go on to his website and you'll be <laughs> fascinated in what he's investigated, what he's done, what he's uncovered. He's into the conspiracy side of it. He isn't into the paranormal side of it. He's, he's only interested in abductions. Uh, and he's done a lot of investigations around um the UK sightings that have gone around. And he, he's really, really good. And it's called richplanet.net. Wow. There's another now, one as well. Um, Secure team on YouTube. Very good. I've spoken to him a few times. Good. He, he knows what he's doing. Well, you say this. Now, we do like to cover every subject on Parasearch Radio. So we don't, we don't balk. But I am very careful in regards to the ufology world. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot of controversy in regard to the ufology world. There's a lot of arguments. There's a lot yeah. of fake... Do I dare yeah. say that word? No, yeah, no, no, there are a lot of... Um... There's, there's a lot of... There does seem to be, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody, but there does seem to be a lot more crackpots in regards to that side of things. <laughs> and I kind of am very wary of getting too involved in that world because of that. I I much prefer ghosts and spirits and stuff like that. Or is that just a personal perspective on things? I don't know. What do you think, Kaz, on this last notes of the show? How does that differ from the paranormal world? That's a good point. That's a good point, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) That is a good point. How does it differ? Um... Is there a difference? <laughs> there is. There's a whole new show right there, guys. <laughs> um, I don't about you guys, but I'd quite like to ask this gentleman to come back and join us sometime in the future. <laughs> I know, I've left everybody on a controversial note, and I do feel that this subject could be one we, re- we revisit. CJ definitely is going to be back on the show. He's an absolute, I love, I love you, CJ. Just saying Thank publicly you. to the world, to the nation. I love you, CJ. Oh, Can we put your whole mind back away? <laughs> anyway, we actually are at the end of the show. Watch out tomorrow on the Parasearch Radio Facebook like page and the group page. We have a brand new competition coming for you guys. So watch out for that. You're going to love what we've got coming up for you. Um, on Sunday night... What am I doing on Sunday night? Let's have a little, little look. Um, I have actually got myself and Claire um, in the studio. We've got Heather Prince, who does ancestral healing, um, on accessing the Akashic Records. So it's all to do with past lives, um, stuff like that. Now, on Monday, I will be going live again on the Facebook group page to tell you what's coming up in regards to the Parasearch shows for next week. <laughs> if you miss any of our shows, we are always on Spreaker right here. They're all archived on here. They're also on YouTube. So go over to YouTube, subscribe to our channel. You'll get a notification when a new show goes up live. 
Also, just letting you know, some of the older shows are actually being archived onto a new platform called Podbean. Um, they're the very, very early shows. If you want to see where we all started, then <laughs> go and listen to some of those because they're quite funny, quite frankly. <laughs> and you'll listen to the shows and go, God, they've actually progressed quite far in like a year and a bit. <laughs> Torture. That's all I'll say. Torture. I love your shows. They are good. Oh, oh, thank, thank you, you CJ. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining us tonight in the chat room. It's always great when we you you know leave comments. We love to have that interaction in the chat room. And I'd love to say thank you so much for being so lovely this week. You've all been fantastic this week. Um, CJ, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your personal experience and being part of the conversation. Oh, thank you very much and blessings to you both. And Kaz, thank you for coming on tonight. Love you always. Where am I ever going to be on a Friday night? Well, Except exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be there or be square. And yeah, Mark, kind of as, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure, my little lovey. Mark. And he's breaking <laughs> up and he's probably shouting aliens at me. Anyway. No. <laughs> no. No. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't. What was... Aliens! Oh, dear. Oh, Sorry. Oh, it right. pops out at the last minute. Guys, say goodnight to everybody, please. Yeah, good night. Uh, and good I bid night, you a very farewell. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Thank you for listening. Bye. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.